Our next inhibitor is called hanging back. Hanging back is about weight shift. It's very related to the first inhibitor, sway. Sway was, did you move backwards? Hanging back is, how well do you move forward? The way we do this is just like sway. I'm gonna start my pitcher at the pivot. The only difference between hanging back and sway is we draw a vertical line outside the front hip for the hanging back. So if you notice, I go right, to the, right in the front of their front hip and draw a vertical line all the way down to the ground. Now what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna do exactly like we did for the sway. I'm gonna bring the player from the pivot to maximum knee lift, but this time I wanna see, do they start to move towards home plate, right? So basically what you should see as they get to the maximum knee lift, like we talked about the two-legged chair, when you remove the front leg, it should move towards the front. And you can see clearly here, his lower body or his body has started to move down the mound and it's encrossed in front of that line. That's what we normally see. Now, I don't care if the player is a big driver off the mound or if they're falling off the mound, you should just see some forward momentum moving towards home plate. Now, this is what we call hanging back. Let's look over here on the right. As he lifts up, and this player, we call, we saw this before, demonstrating a little sway, and this is very common for sway and hanging back to happen together. But we're gonna take him all the way to, to maximum knee lift, and we're gonna look to see if he's crossed the line. And you can see here, not only is he swayed, but this player is hanging back. They have not moved forward. Now, I wanna make it really clear. You can sway and still not hang back. So you can start to move backwards, and then by the time you get to maximum knee lift, be in front of that line. This player didn't. And by the way, you don't have to sway to hang back. You can just lift your legs straight up, but just not move forward. Our goal here is we're looking to see if you move uh, in front of that line. Now, we want you to get that foot down, that stride leg down as a pitcher. We want you to get that down as fast as you can for a couple reasons. Now, first and foremost, we've done lots of research on this. And guys like Tom House and Steve Johnson back in the day did a bunch of this of looking at the amount of time it takes from the time the foot, the stride foot leaves the ground to where it lands on the, on the ground. And the average time and error of that stride leg for most MLB pitchers, great MLB pitchers, is 0.95 seconds to 1.05 seconds. So it's about a second from the time they lift their foot to get down on the ground if they do it correctly. Now, if somebody who hangs back, usually almost all the time if they hang back, that time goes to like 1.3 to 1.5 seconds. You know, it's kind of interesting. People are like, well, why does it matter that you get down in one second? Well, think about from deception standpoint, right? The more time you spend to get the ball out of your hand gives the hitter more time to react to what you're doing. So one of the things that a lot of people don't talk about is how fast you can get the ball out of your hand. And hanging back in a weird way gives them more time to react to the motion you're doing. If you could just get down to the mound and get on your foot on the ground as fast as possible and get the ball out of your hand, they would have less time to react. And think about Nolan Ryan. Nolan Ryan was obviously one of the best pitchers of all time. He was known to have 0.88 seconds. Remember, normal is 0.95 to 1.5. He was 0.88. So not only was he one of the fastest throwers, but he also got the ball out of his hand the fastest, which is maybe why he was the best of the best. So again, hanging back, this can be caused from technical causes, which Steve's gonna talk about, but it could also be physical causes. Now, what are some of the physical causes that could cause hanging back? Well, anything that causes a sway could also cause, cause a hang back. So hip mobility, ankle mobility, disassociation, all of those can cause hanging back. We also have the problems of front side stability. If you don't like to land and stabilize and plant on your front leg, well, maybe you'll just avoid going there, take longer to get there, right? So any of those things can cause hanging back. And then obviously your ability to push off the mound, any type of power problem, lower body pushing, ankle, that you can't drive off the mound, could cause you to hang back. That's hanging back.